are about to meet one incredible human being. His name is Cesar Cruz. He grew up on the streets of South Central LA and ended up at Harvard University. Here's how he did it. For Cesar Cruz, life has mostly been a struggle. My mother left me in Mexico at the age of five to make the journey to the United States. It wasn't until four years later that I would reunite with my mom. As a young boy in California, Cesar quickly learned some hard lessons. To be afraid of police, to make sure that I didn't ruffle too many feathers, and to make myself almost invisible. It also made him fiercely determined. He graduated from college and became a teacher. But working in the same kind of tough neighborhoods where he'd grown up took a toll. I always found myself burying more kids and going to cemeteries than going to graduations, and I was sick of it. Determined to do something, five years ago, Cesar launched the Homies Empowerment Program, offering troubled kids a place to come together in peace. What if we bring two rival neighborhoods together? Let them break bread. The results were more gratifying than Cesar ever dreamed. They start to walk a little taller and prouder. But Cesar also had a dream of his own. Started thinking about what would it be like for a Mexican immigrant, a non-citizen, to possibly one day go to Harvard. He turned in an application to Harvard's Graduate School of Education and was shocked when he got a call from one of the school's professors. Congratulations, you've been accepted to Harvard University. <laughs> I started crying. I couldn't verbalize how happy I was. And now Cesar the teacher is Cesar the groundbreaking student, the first Mexican immigrant male ever to pursue a doctorate at Harvard in educational leadership. My dream with this doctorate is a platform to help young people. What if I could represent a new dream for someone, for someone who looks like me? It's, it's uh, unbelievable. Please welcome Cesar Cruz. Cesar, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I was watching you watch yourself talking about the accomplishments and could see you getting emotional again. It's a, it's a big thing, what you've accomplished. It's difficult because uh, my mother was deported on three different occasions. And imagine uh, you're a little kid and you're nine years old and uh, you come home and mommy's not there. And so um, it, it's been a difficult journey to say the least but it isn't a journey that I've traveled alone. And uh, although you're honoring my story, you're honoring the story of a lot of immigrants. You're honoring the story of kids that oftentimes have been given up on, and I just thank you for that. And you're more than welcome. We thank you. And it makes it all the more remarkable that you could be at one point that little boy who comes home and goes, where's my mom? And is able to work through all of that to reach this point in your life. And I know there's one person, I'm sure there are many, but one in particular who saved your life because you were, so, were living on the streets for a while. You, you were kind of a tough guy. Um, he sent you down the right path. Tell us about him. Well, there's been many people. One is Dr. Tepper. Dr. Tepper is this fiery New Yorker <laughs> who came to East LA and was my math teacher. Utterly amazing. And he, he played a father figure role. I was loved. And that love has carried me forward. Carried you to where you are, yeah. The you know, you mentioned your family. You also mentioned Dr. Tepper. And since you're an educator yourself, just to get back to him, do, does he know where you are at this point? Has he been following your path? I don't think so. You know, and, and if he's still alive, I owe a lot to him because he never gave up on me. So I thought, what if I could do that for kids? Yeah. Well, I have a feeling he's very proud of you. I really do. Cesar, in fact, I, I know he's very proud of you. You know how I know? Because we found him. No. Yes, we did. No, no. Yes. He's very much alive, and he very much wants to talk to you. You take a look at the monitor via satellite. Please welcome Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Dr. Tepper, Dr. Tepper, first of all, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I, were you hearing uh, Cesar before talk about the influence you had on his life? Yes, I did. And your reaction to that and what you would like to say back to him. And he's very glad you're alive, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so are we. <laughs> that, that makes two of us. <laughs> All my life in the classroom, I always have told my students, you need to set high goals for yourself and never give up on your dreams. And you need to always keep focused on what your dreams and where you want to be in life. 
and make yourself that a priority. And Cesar, you kept that promise to yourself, and I couldn't be more proud of you because you're exactly where you want to be. And Dr. Dr. Tepper is a large part of the, of the reason that you're here. What would you like to say back to him? Well, Dr. Tepper, you sound really sweet and great. <laughs> but, uh, but, but you took a knucklehead like me and you pushed me. And I remember you would challenge me. And I owe such a debt of gratitude to you. And I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Cesar, everybody needs a Dr. Tepper in their life who will believe in them when so many do not. There are kids right now who may be watching this, or, or mm. young women, young men, who feel that they don't have any opportunity. What do you say to them? You've got to be able to know yourself. And the part of it is ethnic studies, is when you know your history and you know you come from kings and queens and when you know you're valuable, you could stop living in nightmares and start to live in dreams. And I would say that is very powerful. It's very powerful, but sometimes a kid doesn't have that support system around them. You had love around you, and you had some people who cared. Not everybody has that. That's true. And so, you know, part of why we try to open the Homies Empowerment Center is when we think of kids that are gangs uh, or gangsters, could we picture them as our little cousins? Could gangs be seen as second families, and could we try to make gangs healthier and provide a space of protection, of love, of comfort? And that's what Homies Empowerment tries to do. Cesar, I, I applaud you for everything you have done and will continue to do uh, you. as you move forward. Before I let you go, immigration policy is a huge issue in this country right now. Where do you think we should begin in terms of tackling the issue? You, you never want your mom deported. You never want your mom taken from you. And when we dehumanize people and we call them illegal aliens and wetbacks, it's easier to abuse them. And when we talk about who's illegal, the United States Southwest has names like California, Texas, Oregon, Nevada. The reason there are these names, that used to be Mexico. Two grandmothers ago, my grandma was on her own land. Two grandmothers later were wetbacks. What has happened? What is illegal? And so I want to I want us to try to understand this happened to the Irish community, to the Portuguese community. We've been having this debate for centuries. When will we realize we're an immigrant nation and that makes us stronger and we stand up together? Thank you, Sosa. Thank you. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.